My name is Mike Stringer. I'm one of the directors of Hybrid Enterprises. I'm basically involved in special makeup effects. I'm Mike Bates. My speciality for the firm basically is making sure that communication between the various departments works within the workshop structure. We do cover a whole range of, of what people call special effects or special makeup effects, even though a lot of the time it's not really makeup. Severed heads, limbs, replica faces, this kind of thing. It's anything where it has to be physically created for an on set purpose, whether you physically make something from scratch to look like something else. That's what we do. We get an awful lot of CVs from people who all want to work in this industry, they think it's going to be great, it's glamorous, it's lots of fun. What it really is, is a lot of hard work, a lot of effort. You've got to really care about what you do. Yes, you have to be artistic, yes, you have to have a little bit of flair, and some knowledge and some experience is always good. But it's glamorous at times, but that is not the reason to be in the game. I started basically about 15 years ago making props and designing props and models and effects work for just private customers and that kind of thing. Um, and it's probably about six or eight years ago now that I was approached by a customer who wanted some fangs and some other things for an event he was involved in. I heard about a guy who made some pretty good teeth. I went over one evening for a fitting um, just to see if they, they were all nice and snug. Um, they looked great and I thought, yeah, I'd love to know how to make these things. He was busy on a couple of projects at the time and he was working from home, so he was putting some long hours in. So I just said to him one day when I was having a fitting, if you like need a hand, you know, let me know. I'd always been interested in this kind of stuff. Right back to when I was a kid, you know, watching American Werewolf in London and Aliens and all those films just fascinated me. So I thought, hey, I have to make something like this. What we've done above all else, above all our other special makeup effects work, is develop a prosthetic material which is very, very cutting edge. It's a material that looks, acts and moves like real skin tissue. The whole of the effects industry, both in America and the UK, are all trying to develop translucent materials. Many houses have their own version of a silicone prosthetic material to greater or lesser degrees of success. The real problem I think that most people have had with it is that it'll look fine on camera, but it won't move well enough, it won't be soft enough. They can't get the edges to blend convincingly enough. They just don't have the softness and the movement in the material, and certainly they don't have the guaranteed adhesion. And this is something that we have managed to attain. Our material is guaranteed. There's also another aspect to the silicon that we've developed, um, and that would be the possible use uh, in the medical uh, industry. If someone had a very, very severe burning, providing the scar tissue would um, settle down and it's well after the event, say, for example, that they had to attend a wedding or something, and basically they could appear in photographs on film where, where they wouldn't normally want to. There's the ability to recreate the face how it used to be. Um, we wouldn't say that it's, it's good for permanent uh, applications, but it could help with the healing process. I mean, there are many possible avenues that we could go with, with this material. When we were at the final stages of testing with the silicone system, we actually sent samples out to various special effects houses. With Weta, they were one of the people that came back to us, and we basically did an old age makeup test, and this was during the Lord of the Rings shoot, nine months after the, the actual production had started. We were contacted to say, great, this is a mature we want to use, and we've got some pickups coming next year, and from there the relationship grew. We were brought in quite late on the Lord of the Rings project, actually, for the pickups of the two towers. We did um, replacement appliances for the Gimli character, John Rhys Davis's character, who plays the dwarf. When I saw um, the actor wearing our Gimli appliance and watching him just perform on set with, with the appliance on, I know what the actor looks like, um, and I saw the appliances here at the studio while we were making them. Um, but to actually see them on and at the actor and coloured and moving real time, it, it was amazing just to see it working so well. And John had a whole day on set. We arrived on set late to see him and he wandered up and he just caught us out of the corner of his eye. And just as he was sitting down in all his full regalia, just sitting down into his comfy chair, he just shouted out quite loudly, marvellous prosthetic, wonderful prosthetic, as he sat down. Because he was most happy with being able to move and emote and be comfortable in his appliance, which for an actor is critical. At the end of the day, they hate being stuffed under loads of rubber and things, which is no longer their own identity. 
they, well, they want to feel that they can actually be a real person, even though they're supposed to be something completely different. As much as we're excited about the silicone system we've created, primarily this was for our own use and our own productions and our own projects. And our real passion is working as a firm on our own productions, from the design sketches to the finished product. And the use of the silicone really is just an extra added uh, bonus for us. And when we actually do get to see more close-ups of special makeup effects, you'll start to see the synergy between CGI and special makeup effects become clearer because both of them can work together very well. CGI is affecting creature effects, it's affecting maybe costume embellishments, certainly backgrounds, certainly a lot of other physical prop elements in films. This has been seen a lot in some of the major films now. Half the things you're seeing on the screen literally were not there, even though you might think they were. Now, the real buzz is coming from actually seeing our work appearing in productions. And at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how much money you earn and what job you do, to actually see your name in credits on productions and seeing your designs coming to life is, 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 is the highest buzz you can get. I read The Lord of the Rings when I was a young child, and, and that sparked the imagination which fuels everything that comes out today. So having even played a small part in that has been an immense privilege. There is a great deal of satisfaction one can gain from the creation of something. Too many people, I think, unfortunately, suffer from having to have jobs which spend a lot of time sat in front of a computer not doing a great deal of creative work. And I think the human being needs to create. That's why we're here, that's what got us to where we're at now, by the fact that we actually created everything that we see around us. I feel, I feel quite good about that.